from the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering UiPath Forward Four. Brought to you by UiPath. Welcome back to Las Vegas. The Cube is live with UiPath at Forward Four at the Bellagio. Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. We're going to be talking about UiPath Integration Suite. We have a couple of guests joining us here. Mark Gini is here, the GM of UiPath, formerly the co-founder and CEO of Cloud Elements. And Peter Villaroy also joins us, Director of Global IT Automation Practice at UiPath. Guys, welcome to the program. Thanks, Lisa. Great, Great to be, be here. here. So Mark, let's go ahead and start with you. The, the Cloud Elements acquisition was done in about the last six months. Talk to us about why you chose to, to be acquired by UiPath and where things are today. Some big announcements yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, if you go back uh, six months ago, um, you know, we had been in conversations with UiPath for, uh, for quite a while. And, um, you know, as we were looking at our opportunities as an API integration platform, so Cloud Elements, just to step back a little bit, um, was a leader in helping companies take APIs, integrate applications together, embed that into their, in, into their apps. And um, UiPath approached us about the combination of what's happening in the automation world. And you know, these, these have been, as, ID, as the, um, Maureen Fleming from IDC mentioned this morning, integration and RPA have been separate swim, swim lanes. And what we saw and uh, what UiPath approached us with was the ability to combine these together and really be the first company to take and take UI automation and seamlessly connect it together with API automation or API integration. Peter, what's been some of the feedback? We know you guys are more than 9,000 customers strong. Now we've had a whole bunch of them on yesterday and today. What's been the feedback so far on the Cloud Elements acquisition? So there's a, a huge amount of interest. Uh, we, we've had very positive feedback on that, Lisa. Um, the, the combination of UI-driven automation and API uh, native integrations is is key, especially to the IT leadership that I work with, um, some of whom have traditionally compartmentalized UiPath's platform in the uh, UI space and legitimately think about their own internal processes as being having very little to do with a user interface, right? And so combining UI-driven uh, automation together with uh, API integrations really helps to pick them up where they are and show them the power of that kind of a hyper automation platform that can deliver value in a number of spaces in IT. Did you guys ever see the movie Blindside? <laughs> right, you yes. know what I'm talking about with Joe yeah. Theismann, gets hit on the blind side <laughs> and then he, his yeah. career is over. And, and that's when people realized, oh my gosh, the left tackle for a right-handed quarterback is so important and in some subsequent drafts, when somebody would pick a left tackle, like a good left tackle, all the rest that's went. It. And that's what's happening in, in the automation business today. You guys took the lead, you, you set the trend, and people said, wow, this is actually going to be a huge market. And then now we're seeing all this M&A occur. Yeah. And a lot of it from these big software companies who believe every dollar of software should go to them, saying, hey, we can actually profit from this within our own vertical stack. So what do you make of all the M&A that's going on? In particular, there was one recently where a yeah. private equity firm is mashing together uh, 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 a, a long time RPA vendor with a long time integration yep, firm. Yep. So it looks like you guys you know, are on the right side of history in that yep. regard, your thoughts. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, if you think about automation, right, you've got to obviously help people do their jobs better. But if you're going to automate a process in a department, you need to connect the applications that they use, that those people use. Um, otherwise, you can't accomplish it. And where APIs fit in is, is automation and UI automation has become more and more mission critical and has become bigger and bigger part of enterprise IT wants to get involved. And so enterprise IT gets involved and what's their stack? It's API based. Their technology stack is how you connect back is through API. So more and more companies are seeing what UiPath saw is that if you're going to automate every process and every department for every person, you need to connect to every application that they're using. And that's why this is now becoming, right, you, you, three companies now just recently have done these types of acquisitions of bringing an integration platform in and then combining them together, or trying to combine them together. Peter, all, all APIs are not created equally as we know. Some are sort of you know, half-baked, a lot of them, many of them, don't have decent documentation, so there's sort of a spectrum there. Yeah. How do you, how do you think about um, prioritizing? 
How do you think about the landscape? Do you just kind of ignore the stuff that's not well documented and then eventually uh -huh. that'll take care of itself? Or how, how should so we think about there that? There have always been layers of integration, right? Especially working with the IT organization. So you've got our native integrations which make it easy to drag and drop activities. And then you've got the APIs that we can consume with various activities. That area has really grown through the acquisition of cloud elements. And then you've got that third layer where when all else fails, you go onto the user interface and interact with the application like a human does. And what you see is that our, our interaction with cloud elements really enables uh, a great enhancement of that lower base level, um, which is mildly interesting to the lines of business, very important to IT. Yeah, for sure. So the reason I asked that question is I was talking to one of your customers, who's a big SAP customer, he said, I love UiPath. The problem I have is I got so many custom mods and so it's this, you know, yep. orally documented and I can't, I want to put automation in there, but I can't. So do those, parts of the tech stack become like the mainframe of, of my, you know what I mean? And just sort of, they live there and they just keep doing their thing, but there's so much innovation that pops up around it. How do, how do you see yeah. that? Well, that's part of the agility that comes with a platform like UiPaths is that uh, you can interact with the, you know, very uh, clean, uh, swagger documented RESTful APIs, and you can interact with SAP on their proprietary ages old APIs. Um, those are things that we've traditionally done decently well, but again, through this acquisition, we could do that on a grander scale um, with bi-directional triggering and all the goodness that comes with it. So you can solve it. that problem today, that, that, that your customer, and this was a couple years ago, you can solve that problem with cloud elements, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. The, um, the ability to integrate to these enterprise platforms like SAP, it, 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 you need multiple tools to do the job, right? So UI automation's great, but if you've customized the UI significantly or other things like that, then the API can be a great structure for it. And other cases where um, that API provides a resiliency and a, and a scale to it that um, opens up new processes as well to those corporate systems, right? So the, the balance of mm -hmm being able to bring these two worlds together is where you can unlock more options. Because you got east-west automation, that's where you're going to be <laughs> Now you're going north-south with cloud elements, is sort of deeper, right? Yeah, yeah, and bottom line, from the VP of IT's point of view, the more that can be done from a machine-to-machine -machine yeah. communication layer, yeah. the better, right? So, for sure, yeah. Mark, what's the opportunity for the existing cloud elements customers to take advantage of here? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, we've continued to support, brought our customers over with us. Uh, Part of our customer base has actually been a uh, significant number of software customers, uh, companies, uh, SAP's one of them, uh, uh, DocuSign, Gainsight, you know, so household names in the, uh, the world of, uh, of software as well as large financial services institutions like uh, US Bank and Capital One and American Express. All of them had that common need where um, they wanted to have an API-centric approach to being able to connect to customers and partners and leverage our platform to do that. So we um, will continue to support that and extend that, but we see opportunities where again, we couldn't automate everything for our customers be just through APIs. And uh, you know, for example, one of our, the major financial services institutions we're working with wants to take um, and provide a, a robot for their um, uh, customers and commercial payments to be able to automatically kick off an API. And so that seamless integration where we can combine that automation with robots, leveraging and kicking off APIs automatically, auto takes us further into automating those processes for those customers. So, so you guys, six months, right? Uh, talk about how that integration, maybe API integration company, it, it better gone smoothly, but what, what was that like? You guys are getting the knack of M&A. Uh, talk about that, what'd you learn, uh, maybe, yeah what you would do differently to even accelerate further? How'd it go? Well, I think that's best answered uh, <laughs> from you having been yeah. on the acquisition side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we, uh, how well it went is six months later, which I think is really unheard of in the technology world, we're introducing our combined offering, uh, UiPath integration service that essentially takes what Cloud Elements built, embeds it right into Automation Cloud Studio and the UiPath product suite. And uh, it's been a global effort, right? So we had the UiPath team was based in Hyderabad, Denver, and Dallas, and then we've got um, UiPath engineers working with that Cloud Elements team that are in Bucharest, Bellevue, and Bangalore. 
and with the miracles of Zoom and uh, that type of thing, never meeting anyone in person, we were able to um, integrate the product together and launch it here today. Six months is a fast turnaround time frame. Was, how much of that was accelerated by the, fa by the fact of the global situation that we're in? Yeah, well, you know, in, in some respects that, that helped, right? Because we, um, um, we didn't have to waste time traveling and we could uh, hop on Zoom calls instantly. We spent a lot of time, even over Zoom, making sure there was a cultural fit. UiPath has a, a you know, not only the humble, bold, and, um, you know, type of values, but it's a very collaborative environment, a very open and collaborative environment, as our Brent can uh, attest to. And that collaboration, I think, and that spirit of collaboration really helped us feel welcome and uh, move quickly to pull this together. And also the uh, necessity is the mother of innovation, right? And uh, <laughs> yeah. the UiPath traditionally being popular in the CFO's organization, we're becoming the CIO's best friend and it, the timing was right to introduce this kind of capability to combine with what we traditionally do well and really move into their picking up, like I said, the customer where they are and leading them into that fully end-to-end -end automation capability. And this was integral, so it wasn't time to kick the tires, but to get moving. Am I right there's a governance play here as well? Because IT is kind of generally responsible for governance. If you make it easier for them to, whatever governance systems they're using, governance, privacy, security, that now you can just connect, they don't have to rip and replace. Is there an angle there? Sure. Yeah. yeah, so nothing's more important than IT than, than control and governments and change management. And half of the uh, conversations we're having out there on the floor are around that, right? Um, uh, ensuring that all of the good governance is in place. Um, and we have a lot of the um, uh, integrations and frameworks necessary to help that through your DevOps pipeline and doing proper CI/CD and test automation uh, and you know introducing that integration layer in addition to what we already have just helps all of that to uh, move more smoothly and bring more value to our customers. Mark, talk to me about some of the feedback from customers that you mentioned DocuSign, SAP, probably I imagine joint customers with UiPath. Now they're you're working together. What's the, the what's in it for them? Yeah, no, the, the feedback has been tremendous, right? So, um, API automation is not new to UiPath, but customers have been asking for more capability. So one of them is in that governance area that we were just talking about, right? The ability to create connections centrally, enable them, disable them, right? You got mission critical corporate applications. You want to be able to make sure that those applications are being you know, controlled and monitored, right? So that was one aspect, and by bringing this as a cloud-based service, we can accomplish that. Um, the other area is the, this uh, eventing capability, the ability to kick off workflows and processes based on changes to corporate applications. A new employee is added in Workday, I want to kick off a process to onboard that new employee. Um, and that trigger and eventing service has been really well received. And then, um, yeah, so that I'd say with the ability to also create new connections more simply was the third big uh, factor. Uh, we created a standardized authentication service, so no matter where you are in the UiPath product line, you get a consistent way to create a new connection, whether it's a personal connection by a business user to you know, Google Docs or Microsoft Office, or you're a COE or IT creating a connection to uh, uh, an important corporate system. How about the partner, I know you guys had partner day here uh, leading into forward four. They must be stoked about this. It gives you a lever to even add new partners. What was those conversations like? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. The uh, partners are excited about those same features, but um, they're also excited about something on our roadmap, which we expect to be previewing early next year, and that's a connector builder. So the ability for partners to uh, more quickly than ever create their own connectors that'll work just like first party connectors that we UiPath build and add them into catalog, share them in the marketplace. So there's new revenue opportunities, new opportunities for partners to create reusable assets that they can leverage. And um, yeah, so um, lots of things, lots of work to continue to do, right? It's only been six months and, uh, but that's, uh, th that's going to be a big initiative going yeah, forward. So integration service, as you mentioned, announced at this conference. We know that that's the first step, obviously accomplished as we also talked about very quickly in a six month time period, but what does the future hold for API automation and integration service? Yeah, so um, one of the uh, 
key areas is just continue to expose the integration service um, more broadly in the UiPath product portfolio. Now that we have this service, uh, more UiPath products will be able to leverage it, right? We're starting off with Studio and Orchestrator, but that um, we can all use and share that common, uh, common capability. Um, the other is to make access to complex business systems easier. So you think about it, right? A, uh, to get a, a purchase order from NetSuite might take five or six API calls to do. Well, a citizen developer doesn't know what those five or six things you have to do. So we'll be creating these business activities that are just get me open purchase orders that'll work seamlessly in the studio product. And behind the scenes, we'll chain together those five, six API calls to make that a simple process, right? So taking the integration service and making it even more uh, powerful tool for that citizen developer, that non-technical user as well. So that's development work you're going to do. That's work right. we're going to do, as well as enable partners to do as partners well. Can do it. So, so it's a key part of our roadmap over time. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean the partner piece is key because when NetSuite changes how it does yeah, that, you're creating that abstraction layer, so, but that's value add for the partners. Absolutely, yeah. and they have that domain expertise, right? They can create assets uh, leveraging the UiPath automation capabilities, but also bring their knowledge about SAP or Workday and those Oracle EBS and those core business systems, and then combine that together into assets that enhance integration service that they build and I can, and can share with their customers and share with our marketplace. Right, because the Workday work developer's going to know about that well ahead of time, know what's coming. And, and they know and better and than we do, can, right? Yeah. That's their business. That's yeah. what they know really well. Yeah, nice, nice value add opportunity. Peter, one of the things that UiPath has been known for is it's being very, and I've said this on the program the last two days, is being a, a good use case for land and expand. Mm -hmm. You guys have 70% of revenue that comes from existing customers. Talk to me about the Cloud Elements acquisition as a facilitator of that, because you kind of mentioned, you know, we we're used to be really in bed with the CFOs, now we're getting CIOs, and we've heard from a number of your customers where they started in finance and it's now enterprise-wide. How is this going to help facilitate that even more? Yeah, it really helps it. You know, um, touching on what Mark just mentioned about the citizen developer, right? Just as one of many examples, the, uh, the empowerment of end users to automate things uh, for themselves um, is critical to that land and expand um, successes that we've been seeing. And where, uh, from an IT standpoint, uh, the frustration with the citizen developer is, you know, maybe what they're building isn't so top notch, right? It works for themselves, but we can't uh, uh, replicate that. But Put, making it easy to make API integration part of what they do in Studio X is so key to enhancing also uh, the reusability of what's coming out of there so that C, uh, uh, the COEs can replicate that across teams or globally within their organization. And that's part of land and expand because you may find something that's valuable in one line of business, replicates easily into another line of business if the tool set is in place. Pretty powerful model, Lisa. It is. Yeah. Guys, thanks so much for joining us today, talking about the Cloud Elements acquisition, what you're uh, doing with integration service, what's to come, the opportunities in it for both sides, and your partners. We appreciate your time. Great, thanks you guys. Thanks, Thank Lisa. you very thanks, much, Dave. appreciate it. Thank you. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live in Las Vegas at the Bellagio UiPath Forward 4. Stick around, we'll be right back.